Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we are going to continue on in Chapter 7, looking at special cases of the big theorem on Sarah's conjecture that we have, which I'll remind you of in a moment. Last video, we saw that Ribbit's theorem was a special case of the big theorem on Sarah's conjecture. We're going to be looking at two other special instances of the big theorem used in the proof of modularity over the next videos. But for now, we're going to have to develop a crucial proposition on surjectivity versus irreducibility that was used in the proof of modularity, assuming that R equals T. It was one of the linchpin theorems of chapters one and two of my notes. So let's recall where we're at. Theorem two was let P be a prime bigger than two and let rho from GQ to GL2 of FB bar be a continuous irreducible odd representation. Suppose that rho is modular of some type, then rho satisfies Sayre conjecture meaning it's modular of the type prescribed by Sir. Moreover, if rho is FP bar modular of some type NK epsilon and N and P are co-prime, then N is a multiple of Sayre's N, K is at least Sayre's K, and epsilon is obtained from Sayre's epsilon by composition with the natural map from Z mod NZ to Z mod N of rho Z. Okay, special cases of that theorem are needed three times in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. It, uh, Ribbit's theorem, as we saw in the 7.4 video, is one of these special cases. So basically we have modularity implies FLT. Ribbit's theorem is used here as one of the three special cases of theorem two. And then there are essentially two other special cases of theorem two used in the actual proof of modularity. We'll look at those in the next videos. But before we do that, we're actually gonna need a crucial proposition, which again, like I said, is used in the proof that semi-stable modularity holds given that R equals T, okay? So proposition one, here's the, here's the crucial proposition. You may remember this. Let E over Q be a semi-stable elliptic curve. Let P be prime and let rho P bar from GQ to GL2 of FP be the mod P representation attached to E. So this is the action on the P torsion of E by Galois. Then rho P bar is either surjective or it's reducible with semi-simplification isomorphic to one direct sum chi P bar, the mod P cyclotomic character. Okay, let's look at the proof. Um, for the proof, let me give you the general strategy and then some setup and then we'll get into the proof. So by Proposition 21 of Sayre's uh, Galois Properties of Points of Finite Order paper, we're just done immediately if P is bigger than five or if the image of rho P bar has order divisible by P, okay? So let's suppose we're not in these cases. So in other words, suppose P is two, three, or five and that the image of rho P bar does not have order divisible by P, okay? If rho P bar is reducible, then Sayre's paper also shows that the semi-simplification is isomorphic to one direct sum chi P bar, which is what the proposition claims. So here's what we'll do. We'll assume rho P bar is irreducible and we'll derive a contradiction. That means we are in one of these cases if P is two, three, or five. In particular, rho P bar does have order divisible by P. And so we're in a case where we're already done by Sayre's paper. So it's a bit of a tricky line, but all we really have to do now is assume P is two, three, or five, assume rho P bar is irreducible and get a contradiction. That's it. Okay, some setup. So let G be the image of rho P bar then that composed rho P bar is chi P bar, remember? Well, that's surjective. So the determinant map from G to FP star is surjective, okay? Recall also from theorem one of chapter one that rho P bar is unramified outside P. That's gonna be a crucial property that we'll use. And then kind of used a couple of times in this proof is following Sayre's argument. We know that the image of inertia at P under rho P bar is either a non-split Cartan, meaning it's cyclic of order P squared minus one, or it's so-called half a split Cartan, meaning it's conjugate to a subgroup of elements of the form star zero, zero, one. As a fun fact, the first case arises if and only if E has what we call good super singular reduction at P. And you can see Sayre's paper for that. Okay, so I'm gonna split it into three cases, P is two, P is three, or P is five, and I'm gonna get a contradiction in any case. P is two is the easiest. Okay, so a general fact to keep in mind here is that GL two of FP has P squared minus one times P squared minus P matrices. So if P is two, we have six matrices here. But remember, we're assuming two is co-prime with the cardinality of G, the image of rho P bar, okay? So G must have order three. Well, it has to have order three or one, but rho P bar is irreducible. So G has to have order three. Now, Q, so if you translate this into Galois theory, what this says is Q has a Galois extension of degree three ramified at only two, because two is the only prime, prime that rho P two is ramified at, right? And my image has order three, so my extension has degree three. This is just the fundamental theorem of Galois theory, right? The problem is there is no such extension. And you can use class field theory to see this. So by Kronecker Weber, and the fact that P is totally ramified in the extension Q adjoins zeta sub P to the N, where zeta sub P to the N is a primitive P to the N root of unity. Any abelian extension of Q unramified outside two is contained in Q adjoins zeta sub two to the N for some N. 
Well, that means its Galois group is a quotient of Z2 cross, where Z2 is the two attic integers. But we know the structure of the two attic units. I mean, you can see Neukirch or whatever. Basically, there's no such quotient here of order three, so we're done. Okay. In fact, I'll give you a much more general fact. It's now known that 17 is the smallest integer and for which there's a degree and number field ramified only at two. You can see Jones number fields unramified away from two for more information on that. Okay, what's the contradiction when P is three? Assume P is three. Well, by assumption, G has order dividing 16 because GL2 of F3 has 48 matrices in it. And we're assuming the image is co-prime to three. Okay, and it has order co-prime to three rather. Now, row bar P is absolutely irreducible because irreducible implies absolutely irreducible. In this case, you can see chapter one where we talked about this. Although I do owe you a small proof there, which is done, I think in chapter 16 of my notes. And so it turns out that G actually has to have order eight or 16. In particular, it can't be order one, two, or four. The fact that it's order, not order one is clear, but the fact that it's not order two or four essentially follows from the possibilities for the image of inertia above and the fact that we're absolutely irreducible. Okay, so this is a quick exercise. I think uh, the Sayers conjecture paper of Sayer kind of addresses this actually. Okay, so this forces G to have a quotient of order four though. Translate to Galois theory. This means we have a Galois extension of Q of degree four ramified only at three. Again, this representation is only ramified at three, but again, there's no ex extension. And the argument is the same as the kronecker weber argument I gave in the P equals two case. So this case P equals three is only very slightly harder than the P equals two case. And actually this last result here is subsumed again by modern results in Jones-Roberts number fields are ramified at one prime. Okay, P equals five is the tricky part. Let's suppose P is five. By section 2.6 of Sayre's paper, G, the image of rho P bar, is either contained in the normalizer of our Cartan subgroup or the image G bar of G in GL2 of FP mod FP star is isomorphic to A4S4 or A5. But here's the thing. Remember, I'm assuming G has order co-prime to five, right? Okay, well, G bar definitely isn't isomorphic to A5 then. If G bar is isomorphic to A4 or S4 though, what does this tell me? I mean, for example, this gives me uh, a Galois extension of degree three of Q or Q adjoin root five, depending on the case, unramified outside five. Again, row bar five is unramified outside five. And again, these extensions that, that must exist actually don't exist. The non-existence of the first extension follows from the usual kronecker weber arguments above. The second guy is a little bit trickier because we've got Q adjoin root five here. Um, but you can use a delic, um global class field theory to see this. So for example, the second extension here, the Galois extension of degree three of Q adjoin root five on ramified outside five would correspond to some quotient of the Adele class group of Q adjoin root five where all the inertia groups away from five have been killed off. But Q adjoin root uh, five has class number one. So if you kill off the inertia groups away from five, this is just gonna leave you behind some quotient of the five attic integers adjoin root five and then take the units. But this unit group, again, has known structure. I mean, it has quotients which are of cardinality four times five to the n or five to the n for some n by the structure of the five attic units. And for example, Dirichlet's unit theorem, all this would be in like Neukirch again. Well, none of these have size three, right? So there's the contradiction. Okay, so we're not any of this stuff here. So the only other possibility is that G is either contained in the, nor well, is that G is contained in the normalizer of a Cartan subgroup, okay? But I'm going to show you that that can't happen either. So let's call the normalizer N in the Cartan subgroup C. Okay. If rho bar P is absolutely irreducible, which it is, its image can't be contained in a Cartan because that would make that would make the representation reducible, right? Okay. Well, look, you have G is an N, you have C is an N, and G isn't in C, right? I'm um, sorry. You have G is an N. You have C as an N, but you have G isn't in C. Okay, so you have to have an isomorphism G mod C intersect G with N mod C, right? But by definition, N mod C is a order two, right? The normalizer of a Cartan, by definition, uh, the normalizer of our Cart a Cartan, by definition, has index two in its normalizer. You can see like LMFDB's exposition on this, though. L functions and modular forms database. Okay, so. Galois theory again, right? The fact that this guy has order two gives me a degree two extension K over Q. 
Okay, I claim that K is unramified, which contradicts the theorem of algebraic number theory that says that the only unramified number field is Q. All right, so look, by construction, K is definitely unramified outside P because rho bar P is unramified outside P, okay? Now, for reasons that I'll explain in a moment, it suffices to show that rho bar P of inertia at P is contained in C. Now, I'm not actually gonna show this, it's an easy exercise. Regardless of whether or not rho bar P of inertia at P is a non-split Cartan or half a split Cartan, it's easy to show essentially by unwinding definitions and looking at the action of this image on the projective line that this must hold. There's really nothing to it. So the question is, why is it actually enough to show this? Okay. Why is it enough to show that rho bar P of IP is contained in C? Okay, look, let's suppose you have that. Rho bar P of IP is contained in C. We know G isn't the subset of C, but G is an N, okay? I have this exact sequence, right? One to C intersect G to G to N mod C to one. In other words, N mod C is G mod C intersect G, okay? This corresponds to my tower of fields Q and K, for example. But look, if rho bar P of IP is in C, what does that mean? What would happen if you were to restrict rho bar P to the Galois group of K over Q? Well, the Galois group of K over Q is the C mod, or G mod C intersect G, right? You would find that restricting to this Galois group, the image of inertia was trivial because it's in C, you see. But remember, if the image of inertia when restricted to the Galois group of a number field is trivial, that's the same thing as that field being field theoretically unramified at the prime in question. So we talked about this back in chapter one of my notes. I made a big deal about this actually. Okay, well, that's what I have. So okay is unramified at P, which is what I want. Okay, so if rho bar P is irreducible and P is two, three, or five, its image uh, must have cardinality divisible by P, but then we're in one of the known cases dealt with by Sarah's paper already, so we're done, okay? So corollary, and then we'll end the video. Let's suppose E over Q is a semi-stable elliptic curve. And let's suppose that rho bar three is irreducible. Then rho bar three is not induced from a representation of G sub Q adjoined root negative three, which is the Galois group of Q bar over Q adjoined root negative three. So rho bar three doesn't come from some smaller representation on this smaller Galois group here. We will need this fact later, okay? The proof is easy now, if you know Mackey theory, okay? So by Mackey theory, the restriction of rho bar three to G sub Q adjoined root negative three is the direct sum of two characters, blah, 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 whatever. The point is it has abelian image, okay? You can see bumps books, for, for example. Now, if rho bar three was induced from G sub Q adjoined root negative three, it couldn't be surjective. That's the problem, which would contradict the proposition I just gave you because it's irreducible. So why couldn't it be surjective? Well. Uh, if it were so induced, the point is that rho bar three would have in its image an abelian index two subgroup because basically this Galois group has index two in GQ, right? So this is Galois theory again. Okay, the problem is GL2 of F3 doesn't have an abelian index two subgroup. <laughs> okay. So there's your contradiction. So we're lacking surge activity despite irreducibility. That's a contradiction to proposition one, the thing we just got done proving. Okay, so done. So this is a crucial proposition. It's a linchpin, I would say. Starting next video, I will begin looking at the other two special instances of theorem two needed in the proof of semi-stable modularity. So I'll see you then and thanks for watching.